master the business of speaking with your hosts, Taylor and Austin. You're listening to Technically Speaking. Welcome to another episode of Technically Speaking. We're your hosts, Taylor and Austin. And in today's episode, we are talking about masterminds. Now, have you ever considered launching your own mastermind? Chances are you've participated in one, or have you tried in the past and maybe it not really work out? This is definitely an episode for you. Now, we've brought in founder of Group Coach Nation, Chris Williams, to unpack what it means to run a successful mastermind. Now, we're not talking about $500 per seat level masterminds. We're talking about $10,000 plus per seat level masterminds. How do you develop, market, and monetize a high ticket mastermind group so that you can elevate your impact, generate more leads for your one-on-one offers, or just grow a business that transforms the lives of many. Now, Chris himself owns his own digital marketing agency, runs two masterminds of his own, including Group Coach Nation. And so he has been through the gauntlet and he's here to share all of the lessons he had to learn the hard way along his journey. As always, stick around till the end for some amazing resources and we hope you like this one. See you in there. <sighs> Guys, we made it. We are live. Yay! Chris, welcome to Technically Speaking. It is amazing to have you here. Guys, I'm so thrilled to be here. Like, this is super duper fun. By the way, if you're just listening to this and not watching, you should, like, go watch wherever they drop it because their backgrounds are really kind of interesting. I have lots of questions, but go right ahead. Mm. Oh, questions. I, I mean, what questions? Ask me some Chris? questions, man. Let's okay, do so don't you want to know when you're, looking, when you're looking at the background with the wood on it, like, I want to know, do you ever... Do you ever plug anything into the two light plugs that are behind you? Oh, like, for sure. Always. Yeah. I, I want there to be I actually like some got really shocked cool, like, by that outlet when I put the wood wall up. You need like one of those um, plug in lights, like a night light that's like aerial mm-hmm. from like Little Mermaid. Like, yes. you need that kind okay. of vibe. Right there, there you go. For sure. Yeah. It'll <laughs> soften the bearded, scruffy kind of look, you know? Yes. So. <laughs> And then, and then the question about the other one here, the circle in the background, I don't know if it's like on the wall, but it looks like it's connected to that tripod, which I think is just a video tripod, but it looks like yeah. you could spin it like one of those things you put on your desk and like keep yourself, you know, entertained oh, when you're bored the wheel of fortune calls. or something. And you could spin it and everything would fall out. But if you spin it fast enough, like it would gyroscope and keep it. So that's, that's what I, that's what I thought when I jumped on the call. I should test that. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm for sure. game for that. If, if it's okay with everybody, let's just take a moment right now and run back there and just give that yeah, thing just a really hard spin. Real good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rinse the drywall off the wall. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, good no, work. It's a good idea, though. I'll put it on ball bearings one of these days. <laughs> give it a nice, good well, twist. <laughs> well, Chris, we got to return the favor. Are you like in a cube over there? Like, what's happening? Yeah. On, so, on I, a few years back, pre pandemic, I had a recording studio built into our house because, you know, we, we all do this <laughs> for a living. Yeah, I'm for a camera sure. hog. Yeah. So um, this has been really, really great. I, I've lived in a padded cell for um, four or five years now, and it's kept the world safe and me happy. Wow. Wow, no straight jacket too. Wow, really moving <laughs> up. Yeah. Must trust you. Yeah, it's right away. Oh, okay. Oh, so they let you out of that? So just yeah. hanging up on the wall over there? <laughs> There's just like an armed guard standing by the doors ready to bounce you out of the way yeah. if you don't put it back on. I'll be done in a minute, all right? I know, I know. I'll put it back on, yeah. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, this is going to be that type of show, you guys. So I hope yeah. you're prepared. <laughs> oh, man. So Chris, this is a topic that I think so many many other not that I think I know that so many of our our listeners and our clients have just a million questions on I think there's even been like attempts at having group coaching programs and masterminds a part of their businesses and you know cracking the code on this subject has been you know difficult for a lot of folks and I think the aspiration of course is to be able to run a group coaching program or a mastermind very much like the things you paint you know uh, the picture you paint and so we're excited to unpack all of that but I've got to ask like how'd you stumble into this world? Like what, I, what happened to get you to where you're at now? I wish I could say that it was intentional because I would love right, to be smart, is. but oh my yeah. gosh, I completely stumbled into this. So I was working, like I, I had a digital agency, still own that one. And we work with surgeons and subspecialties, full service marketing, right? Pretty straightforward stuff. Cool. And I was working 14 hour days, right? I was building half the websites, you know, even doing some social media posts. I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. Like I wasn't using my skills and talents the best way. 14 hour days, I got five kids. I was missing out on life. 
So somebody recommended this book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And we all know mm. that's a big bunch of marketing BS. Who can do that? Whatever. So I read the book and I was like, no freaking way. And then I was like missing some event for one of my kids. And I was like, I'm going to try this. So I outlined the book and I mind map everything he said to do. And I started doing it. Four freaking months later, I'm down to four hours a day and my income had quadrupled and I wasn't trying wow. to make more money. I was just doing exactly what the dude said to do. It's for real. Like Tim Ferriss, I know you're listening to this. Shout out to you, buddy. Thank you so much. And MeUndies, love those too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like it, it worked. So what I started doing is I was like all of a sudden working out less. I got it down to maybe an hour and a half a week in that business wow. because we built a really good team and systems, just like what you guys do. Like you're literally saving people like me, the heartache of going through the pain of trying to sort out. You guys have taken speakers processes and everything around people who want to pitch on line or on stage or whatever, and turn that into like a flawless system where they can get their life back. Thank you. That, that right there changed my life. So people started saying, Chris, how'd you do it? So I started going to lunch, having a few calls with people, explain how I did. And I also, all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I should be selling my time for these calls. And before long, I was working 14 hour days again because I was selling consulting on how not to work. <laughs> and <laughs> so, oh, the turntables. Yeah, I know, right? So then, of course, okay, I should turn it to e course. I tried that. Complete failures five times in a row, a couple hundred thousand dollars in on spend. I have a great team and we got stuff done, but I just could not make that work. So I went to a mastermind one day. I was in a, a high ticket mastermind in Boise, Idaho. And was in their office with about 40 people. And I explained what I just told, told you guys. And they're like, well, how's the mastermind? I was like, loving it. Thanks for having me here. And they're like, no, no, how's your no, mastermind? No. I was like, I'm not a mastermind. I'm copying what y'all are doing. I'm just trying to sell my information online. They're like, no, guy, we started with a mastermind. You got to start at the top rung of the value ladder, build that, and then let everything else flow from that thing. You got cash, you got team. And you got everything you need to market and sell at scale at that point. Whoa. Wow. Changed you everything. Seven those, weeks but, later, I had a yeah, mastermind. Cool. I just took their advice and did it. So it was wow. like inception almost. Like you you yeah, went there for one thing and they were like, yeah. no, you need to be doing this thing that you're doing right now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Wow. And so, wow, now, that is incredible. so I built a mastermind on the four-hour work week, basically, like showing how, here's how to do it. Yeah. And about two years into that, three years into that, something like that. It was obvious. 56% of the people in our masterminds were saying, will you also teach us how to build our own mastermind? So we started mm -hmm. doing that. And within about six or eight months of doing that, we were like, okay, we're on to it. And all we do now is have a mastermind that teaches people how to build masterminds. Wow. Boom. So cool. Well, one of the things that stood out to us, Chris, is like, like this is on, in your bio. This is on your website. This is like the first thing Austin and I like made note of, as you say, most of your time is spent doing the things you love and you list raising five kids and going on awesome adventures, which we should totally chat about at some point. And then you say in your spare time, you do all the business stuff. So this like philosophy must have come from that whole experience of that shift in that, I mean, four hour work week kind of. It, it philosophy, yeah, huh? It, it definitely did. So, I had always had, I think, as a lot of us do, this dream of you know traveling a bunch and we got again five yeah. kids, letting them see the world and just doing stuff. Right? We didn't become entrepreneurs so we'd be chained to our laptops. Mm -hmm. So, I I like had that vision early on, and yet it wasn't happening. I was, you know, how it is. You make more money, you spend more money. So I was just hustling constantly. Life was getting more expensive. We were never getting the freedom. And, and then once, uh, truly, once I was so sick of that, that's what made me actually do something. Mm -hmm. I could have read Tim Ferriss's book six months before or two years before and done nothing and I would have never come back to it. But you're at the right moment, right place, right? You, you hear it. We all know this. We go to the right thing at the right moment. You might be hearing this message right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. I got to freaking make a change. I'm sick of what I'm doing and doing the same thing over and over again is never going to get me there. If it was going to, it would have by now. And I made that change. I made the choice and, and it was with a very specific goal. I wanted to take a one month vacation with our kids. I wanted to know if I could take off work for a full month. Wow. So five months from when I started working on the processes, 
we penciled in the month of like July. It was something like that in the summer. And we penciled five weeks in to work our way from Northern California down to Southern California, learning how to surf and teaching our kids to surf. And it worked. It, it freaking worked. I had to work wow. one of those five weeks. And the other weeks I checked in like for two hours a week each week. And that was it. And that was not a perfect start. But when was the last time you went on a five week vacation? Like, holy cow. Wow, man, man. It, it sounds to me like this is one of those scenarios almost where it's not about whether it's possible or not really, or even the logistics of making it happen. But it was just about like making the choice and then fitting in the things that you know you needed to do into this new model of how you were looking at the world. And it sounds like organically almost or organically sounds like it didn't happen without effort. I'm sure it was a ridiculous amount of effort and time and energy to make it happen. But it sort of became what you wanted it to by way of having just like made up your mind and and taking action on it. Was that like that's your main takeaway there? Yeah, totally. It, that's really true. If I wanted to be an NFL football player, I, that's that's not me. Uh, I, I'm not a team sport guy. I'm not that competitive. I don't have the drive for it, let alone the body type to, to do. I, I would die in like five minutes in the first practice. <laughs> so like, that's not something that's like something I could do even with the right coaching or tools or equipment. But when it comes to running an information-based business, it's not hard. And all the tools are out there. And you just need two things, uh, like an absolute determined spirit to do the work to get the results and somebody to walk you through the process, the systems, the teamwork, the things you got to execute, the things you guys teach every day in your world. Like that's the stuff that has to be done and anybody can do it. And, and that sounds like a sales pitch, but I'm not selling you anything, guys. Like, it's, it's just the way it is. And, and a lot of us don't realize how close we are to the information that we have that somebody else wishes they had. And we don't realize, oh my gosh, this would actually be valuable. Oh, I don't have anything about, no, I promise you, you do. It's shocking how easy it is to find the thing. And then it's just a matter of, okay follow the yellow big road like it's mm -hmm. the, the path is laid out let's just go for sure so one of the things that's like rattling in my mind like as we're having this conversation is i know many listeners they i think especially with the pandemic many of them have attempted a group coaching programs they've attempted building their own masterminds i'm curious from your perspective and the clients that you've worked with what do you find to be the thing that goes wrong most often for people who try and get their own group coaching or mastermind off of the ground. Is there any one thing you can identify? Yeah. Can I give you two? No, please. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Well, just today. Only this once though. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll talk again. fast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two things. One is they overcomplicate the entire process. They're, mm -hmm. they're overcomplicating prospecting, building funnels, having a perfect offer set up, having a landing page, um, mm -hmm. writing curriculum, all the stuff that's super fun to do because it's fun and doesn't require you to put yourself out there and be scared and actually prospect and try to sell something. Okay. Prospecting and selling isn't hard. It's awkward. And that's there's a rough. difference. Hard is I got to show up at the gym and I got to do 200 pushups this morning and run five miles. And I got to eat shit that I hate eating all day long to get in shape. That's hard. But awkward is, oh, I got to go to Venice Beach at, at Muscle Beach and do one push up in front of those guys and girls. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> but if I'm willing to show up and do not 200 push ups and change my life, if I want to show up and do like 20 push ups on Venice Beach, I'll start making friends with the super workout people. And, and it's awkward. But I'm going to get in the group. They'll see that I'm there and we'll start hanging out and we'll be able to trade tips and probably do some business together on all kinds of cool things. You got to do the awkward work and, and people overcomplicate that and skip it because quite frankly, it's easier to do workouts alone than it is in public. You got to do the work. Hmm. Second thing is people like really mess up this group coaching mastermind theme in their own life. 
they think, oh, I'm going from a done for you agency or a one on one coaching scenario to a group so that I can charge less and talk more people into the deal because now I can work right. with 10 people and I can only charge them a tenth of what I was or whatever. Right. The truth is, and I learned this in, in therapy programs for myself, one-on-one -on -one therapy is awesome. Getting in a group therapy, a 12-step program, a residential facility, whatever it is, those things change your life super fast. More than five times faster, the research shows. Not because the therapist in a residential setting or in a 12-step program at night on a Tuesday is better, but because we're community animals. We do things mm. in herds. And when we're out there alone, even with one expert leader, we don't change and have the aha moments and the accountability and the, the need to run as fast as we do when we're in a herd. And we got to do the things together. So when you put together your first group coaching program or mastermind, whatever you want to call it, and it's like a legit one, like 10, 20 people, like people you can actually work with together, they're going to change so much faster and adopt your information so much faster. You shouldn't be charging less. You should be charging the same or more than you're charging for one-on-one. -on -one. Hmm. We actually don't do a group coach nation. We don't do any one-on-one -on -one consulting because we know that it's like 20% as effective as bringing somebody into a mastermind. Like wow. we want you to win, right? And anybody right. in this space, if you want your clients to win, just don't follow the emotion of, oh, it sounds easier to sell people. And it's a down sell. You can just be in my group, you know? No. Like step up to the bar and say, I'm putting you in this group because it's the best thing for you. And yeah, it's expensive, but wait, you, you just told me you wanted to change. So do you or don't you? Right. Wow. Man, that mindset shift. Yeah. You just reframed that for me in a really awesome way. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Can we pause for a second here and just define these things before we keep tossing around mastermind and group coaching and these different components? And I especially just to go a little deeper with that question, although that's a little annoying sometimes. Um, I'm especially curious about the mastermind language because I think I mean, at least with a lot of the people we interact with every day, everybody's a part of a mastermind. And usually that means there's five people that get together and talk about what worked or what didn't work or whatever. I'm, I'm not discounting the effectiveness of that. There's community and solidarity and exchanging of great ideas. So all that's well and good. But I don't think that matches either in terms of deliverables or in terms of expectations of what the deliverables would look like of this high ticket paid sort of mastermind world. So anyways, mm -hmm. that being said, can you just sort of frame this up for us? Absolutely. So let's get a little history here. I, I first heard about the mastermind topic in, in marketing and business spaces, right? We've all heard all these experts have these masterminds, right? We're talking like Tony level, Tony Robbins, and then like, um, uh, let's go Russell Brunson and um, Amy Porterfield. Awesome, high level masterminds. They're cream of the crop masterminds where you're paying 100,000 plus whatever to be in a group with them and like 20, 30, 50 people. That's a legit mastermind. Then I started realizing, oh, okay. So legit masterminds are where a collection of people are going the same direction and they're hiring an expert guide to walk that path with them. But they're all the little Boy Scout or Girl Scout troop together. They're all doing this together. And their collective learning experience is actually more powerful than the coach itself. Um, and, and when I've been in masterminds as a, as a member, which I'm in one every year. I, I rotate around a few different ones. I, I always learn more from the other members than I do from the, the senior person, even though senior people are just amazing. That's a true mastermind. This has been going on for a long time. The, the Carnegies and all, and the, the you know, super wealthy, rich people on both sides of, of the ocean here in Europe and the US have been doing that for a long time, hundreds of years. And then I realized, oh my gosh, in lots of religious settings, there's these collections of like core people that start the religion based on one follower they're following. It's a mastermind. They're all going one direction and they're, they're rapidly changing themselves in the world faster because they're together. And then I was reading this book on Chinese history recently, like 5,000 years of China. It's on audible. It's like one of the greatest courses things. It was really fascinating, really cool people in a cool place. They've been doing masterminds over there for like 4,000 years. Like I think my people were like, 
banging rocks on sticks 4,000 years ago. They were rocking. <laughs> like, that's, that's really cool. So this is not a new thing. The power of it is it's got to be a dedicated group that can actually have enough intimacy to be safe and connect and work together and have a guide to keep them on the path. Okay. Dedicated intimacy and a guide. Now let's do extremes here. The one you mentioned is I got three or four buddies and we have this little mastermind. We just hang out on zoom call once a week, once a month, whatever. Awesome. Dedication is the issue there typically and having a guide. There's not one senior person that's pushing everybody to continue moving forward. We're just sharing ideas, cracking some codes together. Cool. And half the time, half the people are like, hey, can't make it today. I got a kid to drop off at school, whatever. Okay. Dedication and the guide or the, in, or the issue, the intimacy is probably there. If you don't have dedication. You pay 25, 50K to be in a mastermind. You're dedicated. You're going to sh- freaking show up, right? And you got a guide. Okay. That's the one issue there. If you go the other extreme, these people who have like a thousand people and they call it a mastermind and it's a lot of e-course driven stuff and there's once a week coaching calls and there's a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. That's an e-course with a once a week coaching call and a Facebook group. Let's just call it what it is. It's not a mastermind. Nothing wrong with it. But if you're saying, hey, I want to sell you into my mastermind for $9,000 and there's a thousand people in there and we have a weekly coaching call and it's awesome Facebook community and you call it a mastermind so you can feel as cool as Russell Brunson or Tony Robbins. That's just false advertising. Their masterminds are legit. Yours is an e-course with a Facebook group and a coaching call. Not knocking the model, get your terms right. Mm -hmm. And the results that come out of the e-course versus a true mastermind are vastly different. Right. I'm I've, I'm sort of a systems engineering brain, right? So my head always goes immediately to logistics. And so I'm putting myself in the shoes of somebody that may be wanting to start a mastermind and be that expert leader that you're referencing here. And it seems like it's much less about having content and expertise and much more about facilitation of conversation. Is that an mm-hmm. accurate assumption I'm making? Extremely accurate. My primary role in leading two masterminds myself, I lead our, we have a beginner advanced and a pro level group and then a private group. Uh, The private group is a small collection and I'm just one of that members. We just happen to instigate the group. The, uh, The advanced and pro level groups, I teach myself. My role is group selection. It's It's showing up and making sure that everyone in that group is someone that I have put in that group. And, and I've made sure it's a good fit. And yeah, I have a sales team and a lot of prospecting team. We, we get a lot of people through the door, but when it comes to them being in the advanced or pro group, I okay them based on recommendations from my team and a call with that person. I know that sounds like, oh my gosh, what a bottleneck. No, it's really not. It's, it's not hard to do that. But that's so important because the facilitation of a group is everything. And it's really mm. easy to facilitate a good group of awesome people. It's really hard when three of them are like stray dogs who are just yapping at the fence constantly and digging holes and, and chasing random ideas, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, another kind of uh, t- process-oriented question, I suppose, about running like a mastermind. Is there like a – and uh, pardon my ignorance here. So c- curriculum, a process, a – a, a thing you're working through over a period of time with them? Like, how does somebody not just show up and then not have anything to say for a mastermind and actually facilitate that group? Is there, because you said that you're kind of as a collective working together to achieve some outcomes, some collective mm-hmm. learning, right? So does that mean there's like a backbone to that, a process in which you're kind of guiding people through the check in on? Like, how do you end up truly facilitating that mastermind and making the outcomes universal for everyone in that group? Because I think what some people have experienced, us included here, is you'll have people that kind of take all of the ideas and like you and they'll, they'll just go do it. They'll execute like champions. And now they're further ahead than, let's say, maybe other people in the group. And now you've got this kind of disconnect between those that are further along and then those that are not and then those that are in the middle. How, I have just so many questions. Can you unpack some of that for me? <laughs> yeah, those are all really good questions. So let's talk curriculum for a minute and then, yeah. then the transformation. Curriculum is easier than most people think. And you shouldn't build it before your mastermind starts. 
Mm. So if you guys want, like, let's say you're, let's say you're going to lead a mastermind on like helping speakers actually like have a legit business model that's just turnkey, that's built around them, all the systems, the processes, the people, like all of that. That's what you guys do. Let's say you're going to have a mastermind about how to do that if somebody doesn't want you to just do it for them. Maybe you already have that. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yeah I, got like, I got three yeah. people I should refer to you. Is there an affiliate fee here? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, so that's really cool. So me as a speaker, I want to join your mastermind. I don't need to know what you're going to talk about on week seven, if it's a CRM or a automation or what mic to pick or how to follow up with all my stage speaking gigs. Like, I don't need to know that yet. I just need you to say, oh my gosh, I hear you. Life as a speaker is insane. And we have this group that over the next 12 weeks is going to get that under control and get the kinks ironed out where you can be a boss at speaking. And, and we're just going to basically put you in a Formula One car that works. We're going to send you around the track a few times. We'll be right there with you. And we're going to make this happen. Like, that's all I need to know. I need to know that you get me and you know where I want to go and I can trust you. What happens on week seven isn't important to me right now. That just brings up objections. But what is important is that you know what happens on week seven, right? Because you're the leader. So week seven comes from week five and six. As you're, as you're inviting people into your mastermind, they're going to tell you what their dreams and drains and doubts are, their, their goals and their fears, right? Their problems. And you're going to be not writing all this down. You're going to be like making notes and you realize, okay, I see some major themes going on here. I realize definitely what week number one needs to be about. And it's probably way more basic than you ever thought it would be. And I got an idea of two and three. Let's teach week one. Let's ask questions and see where people are getting stuck. And then let's make sure week two and three bring them out of that. And then let's invite them into four and five and six and seven. And it starts, it starts the first time through it, it develops itself, but that development is is very intentionally heard and very intentionally acted on. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. The the one trick there is the ultimate transformation. So if your job is to get them to like having some sanity in their life and get their business in order as a speaker and having all the automations and stuff and the team member to run it and blah, blah, all that stuff. You know where you're done for you service. You're done for you service is wildly successful. It already takes people there. So you know what start and finish look like for somebody who does this right. All you're shifting is instead of doing everything for them, you're shifting to helping them and their team do it. You're, you're really just inviting them into your owner's mindset about it and your staff and team members' action sets and showing them what to do. Like you had 10 new staff members that day and you're taking them all through the process of learning how to do this. Well, that's attainable for anybody with this really, because it sounds like what you're saying is like, it's already the thing that you're doing as the expert, you know what the transformation should look like if it's going to be successful. And then it's just reverse engineering how they're able to do that themselves with you as the guide, as opposed to you putting your hands on. I'm sure a lot of the people listening to this, especially those of you that don't just quote unquote, just get up on stage and speak. Like if you've got a high ticket consulting offer where you go in and work with a company over 12 months or whatever, I, I imagine that the principles that are applied in the done for you version of that as the consultant sort of figure could very easily translate to this so long as you have the methodology to help them do it on their own and support them along the way. That's really true. And you know, a lot of us think if we're consulting or doing done for you services one-on-one with people, a lot of us think, oh, but I can't put them in a group because of the nuances. Everybody's different. But yeah. really, really, if you write down and just go and record every conversation you ever had and go read the otter.ai's, you're going to see that like 95% of it's the same freaking thing over and over again. And, and the person you talk to on a Thursday has the same question that you answered on a Monday. And they would have gotten their answer three days faster if they could have heard the Monday client ask the question. And they'd have been like, oh, of course, that's the question I forgot to ask. And that's exactly what I need to hear. The group does that. Right. Wow. Man, that's so helpful. Wow. Hopefully everybody yeah. that has had this is like anchoring this in their brains. Because I feel like what you're doing here is you're contextualizing what the experience should look like for somebody that's going through right. this and how that 
I mean, it sounds like almost the transformation happens on their own. Like they do it themselves. You're just, you're the guy, you know, like the story brand idea, right? You're the Yoda and they're Luke Skywalker and you're just helping them go defeat the empire. <laughs> For those of you yeah, who are right. random stuff in a swamp and hope it sticks, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so I know we're getting close to the top here, but I, 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 I'm constantly in the mindset of what other people might be thinking. I'm definitely curious about this. It sounds like uh, based on some of the language you're using in the sh- in the in like the show so far that you want people as a group to be experiencing things collectively. Does that mean in a mastermind type of business model that you should aim for cohorts of people uh, rather than constantly adding people into one group that is ever expanding? And is there an endpoint for those people? Uh, mm-hmm. an alumni group, if you will, like what I think a lot of people like have concerns potentially about the cohort model. Cause how do you get 20 people in every 12 weeks? Cause you know, you have to sell one thing over and over again versus something that's evergreen that is really always building that recurring base. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Absolutely. There's so many models and ways to do this. And we uncover all those in the mastermind nice. we on how to build it, which is a great place to, to really pick that apart. But here's the Here's the basic principle. There's two big distinctions in different kinds of masterminds. One is very technically driven and one is relationally driven. All right. Both sets of masterminds are extremely strong relationally. It's group selection. That's, that's so important, right? You want the, the relationships matter more than anything else. But the highly technical masterminds, for instance, our advanced group is a highly technical mastermind, not in the sense that it's software oriented, but like we're teaching people how to build experts who already have an expertise, how to build a mastermind. There's steps we're following one through 10. Like we're going to go through a sequence. I can't drop somebody in week seven right? and help. They got to start together. A relational mastermind though, our pro group, for instance, is a relational mastermind. We don't go through tech processes in there. We're, we're always here to help and answer questions and help anybody needs help because all the people in there have super high ticket offers and big audience and all that kind of stuff. So we're cracking codes for each other, but it's more about relationships. We meet together in person twice a year. We have Zoom calls um, three times a month on different topics. You could jump in anytime you wanted to and fit. But even that, we only allow twice a year new people to come in the group if there's a space open Mm -hmm. because the relationships can get all weird and disrupted if you're just constantly throwing new people in there. It doesn't feel like a family. And so a true mastermind is going to have Firm starts and stops. The more relational, the looser you can be about that. The more technical, the more you gotta like start at the beginning. Mm. Right, it's good rule. Wow, what a great breakdown! That was super concise. Obviously, you've done this lots. This of is times. my first yeah, time. So, oh my gosh, I'm so glad. First time, right. I know. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, Whew, we got it. Got through it. Austin, man, how are you feeling over there? Uh, I think it's awesome. Like, there's so many. I don't know, uh, misconceptions, I think, about this type mm-hmm. of business model. And the way that you talk about it makes it feel very approachable. So for the listeners yeah. that are considering this, now you know who to talk to. We got your Yoda. Yeah, His right. name's Chris. That's right. <laughs> His right. name is Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, on that note, if uh, people want to learn more, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, group Coach Nation. Just go to groupcoachnation.com. Heck, super easy yeah, that's where we nice. hang out and you can find it we got tons of stuff there for you it's so easy yeah for sure it's a beautiful site too so well job well done well job okay well there job. you go good time. well job good time we do podcasting here at speaker flow so <laughs> go check out the link it's in the show notes everybody and hey if you like this episode don't forget to rate it like it subscribe to it and if you want more awesome resources like this go to speakerflow.com slash resources hi everybody yay Thanks for tuning in today. Check the show notes for more info and see you next time. Later.